There's one other missing piece we have not really talked about, which is the complete collapse of death row that happens. I mean, I just, when I went back and looked at the Vibe covers from that year, and early February was the cover with Chug, Dre, Snoop, and Pac. The black one? The black one, oh, the Live from Death Row, yeah. that one. Like, That's yeah. like February. By December, it was a Snoop cover with Last Man Standing right, as right, the cover. Right, right, so right, it's, right, it is that right, calendar year right. that, the the, that, you know, and all of that time. stuff. When does Dre leave? At the end. In the summer. fall, yeah. Yeah. like right in the fall. Pac. Yeah, okay. Pac, you know, the mm -hmm, memorial mm -hmm. cover went into Dre in the suit, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. launching the, yeah, the, yeah, the yeah, new yeah, enterprise yeah. into yeah, Snoop yeah, as, yeah, we, as yeah, last, man, two, yeah. uh, last yeah. man there. So yeah, that happened. When that happened, that happened quick. 1996 saw the release of The Score, Il Nana, and Hardcore, and in many ways changed the perception of female MCs and, you know, gender politics within hip hop. What do you think the significance of those albums and those artists was? It was unheard of, and you know, I mean, that's the first time I think since like MC Lights and the Queen Latifah that people was really talking about female rappers, and they was like really finding their place. And of course, you had Lauren on one side, you know, doing her thing, but then you had Foxy and Kim kind of representing a whole new voice. What Kim and Foxy represent is this sort of hyper masculinity for lyrics, but hyper femininity for looks, yeah. and um, it is the first sort of hypersexual marketing of, of female MCs mm -hmm. that also coincides with some real skills, too. Girl, don't be broke, the sea no she floats. Throw the she boat and keeps the heat close. One feel sweet in this little boutique. Hey, hey, hey. Young chick from the street, damn it, keep the stay there. They had you know skills. I mean? like, they were nice at the Both end of, of the day. I mean, I'm not sure how it translates today. I guess maybe Nikki might Nikki be the, the inheritor sure. of, of, of that yeah. kind of stuff. But in that time, I mean, the first time you heard Foxy, you know, the first time you heard Kim, like, they cut through, like, yeah. both of them. Well, listen, know? Kim was not a solo artist. She was a member of yeah. a group, yeah, she you was. know? She was and she just broke out yeah. of, for her Ooh, own right. talent and, uh, you know. Mm -hmm. I'm taking this. <laughs> Back then, she was doing things that women were do are doing now, with the mini wigs, mini looks, just being, you know what I mean? Being free, saying whatever they want to say about the, their femininity or what have you. Mm -hmm. So I think women, we welcomed it because we really didn't have a voice at that time. We had Lauren, but we didn't have a voice. Yeah. Most of the women who had Lauren's energy were singing, mm -hmm. you know? So mm -hmm. it was rare to see somebody express that through rhyme in the way that Lauren expertly did. She was singing too, though. Which, which, yeah, was she different, was, which, which was, was different like, for her. Which was different to have somebody that was equally, yeah. she was mm -hmm. like one of the first persons that was, that was equally talented in singing and rapping, you know what I mean, to do both. That's why Nas was smart. I mm -hmm. get her on that record mm -hmm. because, you know what I mean? Because you know, she was so respected, you know what I mean, as an artist, and then she ain't even rap. She sung on the record. You know, I guess as a final question, on a scale of one to 10 for each of you, how aware were you of how pivotal the events that you were witnessing were at the time? On a scale of one to 10, a 10, because I was really, really, thought Jay was the greatest rapper at the time. Like, you know what I mean? And my whole goal was just to help him prove it. You know, for better or worse, I gotta say, it's, you know, a nine or 10 too. I, I don't, I mean, it's, it's horrible, but when you're confronted with covering something like Tupac's murder, you know, the, the biggest star within the universe that you're covering, you know, being taken from you like that, then, living through that again the next year with Biggie, um, you know, soon after that was when I stopped editing Vibe and just felt like I'm, this is, this, I'm too beat. You know, I can't keep, this can't be the, the, you know, all of the work that I'm doing. It's, this just taking too much out of, out of everybody. I have to say um, a 10 as well, <laughs> uh, mainly because, you know, I was 13 years old when I heard my first rap record and all I wanted to do was work for Russell Simmons and work for Def Jam Records. Mm -hmm. all, it didn't matter what, I didn't know what I would do. Um, I knew I wanted to do a &R, but I didn't know what I would do to be a part of making music for years to come and uh, being an architect. But that was my major premise, was to be an architect, to be able to put a stamp and allow 10 years later, 20 years later, 30 years later, for people to go back and say, 
wow, that, that album changed my life and for me to be a part of it. I think for me it was probably split, right? I would say, personally, I was maybe like a one or a two. Having a sense of what you're doing and how it's gonna like shape and how it's gonna be looked at from a historical lens. But as far as the culture itself, that was on the nine or, or 10 because like Alan said, there were so many, you know, just huge tremors, so much happening that I knew this thing was gonna be big. Personally, I busted my ass in 96. Mm -hmm. I, it was do or die for me. I never, until I wrote The Big Payback, I had never poured so much of myself into one thing. So this one goes to 11. Hey, I like that. I like that. <laughs> I like that. That's good shit. Thank you guys for coming and doing this. You know, uh, I was 16, 15, 16 in 1996. And, uh, you know, I would not be here today if it was not for all the stuff that you guys were doing in that year. So, you know, I appreciate it. The audience appreciates you guys coming and, you know, sharing all these stories and these bits of yourself. You know, thank you. Thanks for, Thank you. Thanks for having us. Thanks for having us.